Okay, the time is now. Well, uh, it's, uh, thank you, Pierre, for the invitation. This talk is a little bit different. I'm not going to show you any line of code. Oh, sorry. My, my boss is, I, I was a developer uh, a couple of years ago. But right now, I, I change a little bit. I take uh, a movement to the dark side. Uh, so I will talk to you about this that I call us driven organizations. OK, first of all, uh, a warning. Sorry. This is one second right here. I will use some uh, major language. I will say shit, us, and similar things. So if uh, you have some problem with that, this is the moment to leave the, the room. And OK, let's talk about, the, about this. Who am I? My name is Mauro, Mauro Strione. I'm from Argentina. Well, I'm a geek, used to be a developer. I have four, four kids, a wife. I'm from Bariloche, a very beautiful place, recommended to go. Uh, I'm nerd, imperfect husband, uh, part of four, and free thinker. I study computer science and MBA, and I have some agile certifications. And I work in many industries. Porn. Yeah, but it's not what you're thinking. I, my first work in Spain, I lived for 10 years in Spain, was uh, like a webmaster of the porn website. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, then I switched to publicity, CRM, retail, real estate, e-learning, defense, nuclear. Um, aerospace, and in the last two years, in banking. Well, I work currently as an agile coach in Everest. It's in a Spanish company, but I work in Chile. That's what I said to you, that I moved to the dark side. I'm not a developer anymore, but I'm trying to help developers. Okay? I have a fifth child. It's an event that I created that is called Agile Open Camp. That will be this year in Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Spain. And it's about agility. You know? It's a three-day event in the, in the nature. It's interesting to go. Uh, Spain is near, so probably you can go there, I hope. But we are here to talk about the us-driven organization. What is that about? Do you know Frederic Laloux? He's a guy from Bel Belgium, I think. He wrote a book called Reinventing Organizations. And he talks about the evolution of the organizations in, and put it in many colors. The first color, he said, uh, the first color is red, and the, the metaphor is a wolf pack. They say, uh, he said that at the beginning of the time, the, the people started organizing because of fear. No? The driver was the fear, and he discovered the, the authority of the, young, the strongest division of labor. You know, you have to uh, defend of bigot thing, like dinosaurs, like uh, uh, animals. So the, big, the, the strongest guy was the, the, the leader. That wasn't good for, for leaders, because when uh, a stronger guy came over, uh, we are out and another take the place. So we created something like an army or a church, where the, things, uh, the driver is tradition. We have to respect the, the pyramid, right? OK, here we get command and control, formal authority, formal hierarchy, processes, bureaucracy, stability. stability. The next color is orange, and the metaphor is the machine. We are driven by results. Here is the, the time of the Industrial Revolution, and so it's history. And right now, we are moving to uh, more uh, driven by culture organizations, and the color is green, the metaphor is family. And like the ideal for him is uh, teal organizations based on relationships, and the color is teal. Well, he is one color. This is a talk about shit. So what's the color? It's brown, right? Brown and the metaphor is shit. It's a temporal. No? It takes the worst things from all these stages. And the driver is to pretend, to want to be something that we are not. So. How do you feel when, when you are an as driven? As driven is because you don't drive, drive the organization with your, uh, with your brain. You drive with your butt, you know, your ass. How do you feel in that organization? 
you all are on Saturday, Sunday, fucking Monday, right? Fucking Tuesday, fucking Wednesday, Thursday, finally Friday, and over and over again. If you are in this situation, probably Monday done sucks. Probably it's your job, okay? We have to do something about that. Okay, do you love your job? Oh, yes, I love it. Oh. <laughs> not really. Well, we are not alone in this. This is uh, the result of a poll made by Gallup. Uh, the last I, I found is in, from this year. And worldwide, they say, they've realized that only 13% of the employees are engaged. 63% are not engaged, and 24% are actively disengaged. That means they try to our company to fail, you know? It's a, it's a huge number. 87% of the people are not engaged with their work. It's to worry about, okay? Here we got a, a sample. Okay. How do we detect when we are working? Some of you have been working at that kind of organization? Yeah? Come on. I know. <laughs> okay, how, how do you identify that we are in this? Uh, there, there is some pattern that we can find. First, smelly job opportunities, no? Like this. We, get a, we see an offer in the newspaper that says, we are looking for the Scrum Master of the Universe, okay? What they say and what it really means. You will work with the ultimate technologies. What everyone else uses, okay? You have to respond well under pressure. You will be the fireman. You have to be a team player. You must not question the authority. You have to be able to work with the minimal supervision. That means you will be the only to blame when, when things go wrong. You will work with, with an agile team. We do daily meetings, that's all. <laughs> we need an agile ninja. You will work with the worst newbies and impossible deadlines, right? We need to incorporate to our team urgently. The other ninja left, and nobody knows how to do their job. <laughs> you will work in a dynamic environment. Priorities change all the time without any valid reason. We need self taught people. We will not pay for any fucking training. And you have to be passionate. That means we need to work after hours and weekends without complaining. Okay? That's how it looks like. But that's what really means. Hackerman. Do you know Hackerman? <laughs> okay. Well, another anti pattern. Bad faces. When you, if you believe that advert and you go to that company, you will see. You have to look at the people's faces. Probably they look like that. It says that uh, you see the people of the uh, the culture of a company in the coffee machine. You know, if you stay for a while, listening what is what people is talking about, you will discover the the culture of organizations. No bad faces. Something smells really bad there. Another anti-pattern is bad hours. That's the way they measure you, measure your, your work. How many hours you stay at the office? How many hours, how many years of bad hours you have to get over and over and, and the top of the, you know, the pyramid of the, the, the organization? Tell me, tell me how, you, how you measure me and I tell you how we'll be, behave. You know, if, if you only measure me by hours, I only will give you hours. And sometimes that becomes like a, like a prison, no? The only thing you do is to accumulate hours. Well, another thing, the, 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 the leaders there, they go up because of hour, not because of knowledge, but not because of what they can do. So they attract bullshit. bullshit. What's the next framework that we will use? Like they have to do the, to the crystal ball, or maybe, they contract from outside, a, a, a contractor, a consultant from outside that tell you how to manage our organizations. Okay, there are some roles in the as driven organizations. As breaking. When you get to that organization, you think you can do it, you can change it, you can do it well. 
but you are, you realize you try to you try harder, but you realize that not work like you think it will work. So a process happened: the worker zombification. You go there like like a fresh mate. The, then uh, two months later, you got uh, God's removal. Four months later, common sense removal. Passion removal in six months, and finally, we become the average workers. The, that the only thing that looks is for not for brains, but for holidays, for vacations. Okay, and you move to one of these two kind of roles. As kissing, but it was it wasn't no, no. I didn't want to make the the, the draw. So, but licking, but means the same. That's one role you can take. Oh, the other one is we are making some slicking. And the other is butt scratching. What that means? You go, you stay, you uh, do the hours that uh, they ask you. But it works like this coffee, the work, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, lunch. You never touch the work. OK? Here is an example of some guy. <laughs> OK, there is more. <laughs> more to come. Of course, we say at the beginning that this organization is, uh, they want to be something that they are not. They pretend they want to be agile, but they aren't. And this is the agility that, th that they do there. They don't do a scrum. They do scrum, but what is a scrum, but? Is it, uh, there is a version of Scrum, but with one T, probably you hear about it, is I do Scrum, but I don't do retrospective. I do Scrum, but I, do, I don't do reviews. But this is worse. This is like shit, you know? How it works? It works in, in iterations, of course, but it's, it's called iteration, also known as elastic sprint, no? It start with a perfect plan, excessive enthusiasm, total confusion, and the search of the culprit. And finally, you get a, a sheet review, where, where you present the product excrement. And something happened, the persecution of the innocent or the promotion of the incompetent. OK? That, this doesn't end here. We also have, OK, Scrum? Yes, Scrum. Oh, good, Scrum. We also have Kanban, but it's, it's a little bit different. It's not Kanban like that. It's called Ka Kanban or Fak Kanban. Yeah? How it's look like? It also has a board with do, to do whip and done columns, but the first and the last are just decoration. We only use it in the middle. There's no limit for the whip, so any sheet that is going around, we start to making it. You can do this because this is just a small thing, and you accumulate sheet over there. That's more or more smaller things. And in a moment, coming from the top of the company, you get a big sheet, and nothing gets done ever, and nothing, nothing waits in the to-do column. No? Similar. OK, extreme programming. No, similar. It's called XP2. But it's excrement programming. Yeah, it has their own logo. So some books that the excrement programmers read. Copying and pasting from Stack Overflow. That that's give us a, a technique called BDD, block post-driven development. Okay? <laughs> Works on my machine, the definite guide. Pretending to know JavaScript. Hating other people's code. Okay? A practitioner of, OK. And what about a scaling? The, the big money in agility is in scaling, not in teams. It's in make, putting this sheet in the whole company. So we have a scaling also in as driven organizations. We started thinking about the name of the framework. Scale it as driven organization. It's sad. It's here, like, we're going to suffer. So check it out. Fast agile scaling technique. Fart, mm, doesn't smell so good, so we have to think another. Scaling agile on large enterprise. Seems sale. 
Okay. We also have release trains in sale. That's what the client manager offers. And that's what the agile coaches deliver. You know? Look similar? Probably, no? <laughs> there is a roadmap also. We, you have a lot of teams making Scrum, but you put the framework sale here, but you have, it's a meta framework. You, you have to use another framework because shit scale with any framework. But also you have to make, you put support and mindset with the, that special S. If not, if not, not, not going to work. And you get technical mortgage. It's similar to technical, technical debt, but you have to pay it for 20 or 30 years, you know? And the result is a big pile of shit. OK, also, management 3.0, no, different. We have leadership 3.0. You have to read one of these books, real books, actual books, and you will learn how to make it. The heart of Agile is by, based on for practice, collaborate, deliver, reflect, and improve. No, we don't use this. We use Fart of Agile. Also has four practices. You have to decorate. Uh, you have to put a lot of post-it over there. It doesn't mind if it's Agile, but it, it, it has to look like it's Agile. Okay? Post-it is the, the answer. You have to sanctify everything that came from the Agile world is, is a word of God. Everything that came from PMI or the, the other school of management, no, it's just bullshit. Don't take it. You have to repeat the same recipe on every company you go to try to transform. And finally, you have to control all your, your employees because they want to fuck you. We, we see the, the Gallup results. Be careful with that. You have to control everything. Coming soon, and other things in, in this agile, form, uh, agile strategy, deep poops, the shit old transformation, mindful shit, bio neuro agility. You have to put bio neuro if you want to make money, because it's, they're two trendy words. And agile of things, big agile, and more to come. OK. But that's one of my, my, favorite, my favorite slides on this talk. Remember, Agile is not a mythological uh, creature that it posts it and cheats software. OK? But sometimes we, the Agile coaches, the, the, the people that are trying to change the organizations, forget that. And the only thing we care about is to waste a lot of post it and not giving value, not taking care of people. OK, this is. Put in action, okay? Okay, the results. What's the result of having an organization like that? The organization chart is based on gerontocracy, you know, the power of the elders. The people that more bad hours has in their butts get in the top, and the, the decisions just flow to the bottom of the pyramid. We work on silos. We don't... We, we want to save the, the, the... This shit is not mine. My, my ass didn't do that shit. It's hers, you know? Working in silos. <laughs> Using the two practices, product discovery sheet and customer experience, we, we get products like this, with a lot of features that not, nobody wants. You know? Do you remember? I think you are giving a GT talk. You need help? Do you remember that? Yeah, that's a kind of shitty feature that nobody wants, and it costs a lot of money. Oh, the use of technology. We, we don't take advance, advantage of the, the technology that we, we have available, and we get uh, married with all technologies. That's something that makes the, uh, us, the geeks, to run out the, the companies. You remember that? You know, it's not, not happening right now. It's part of the, the talk. So we, we have three options when we are involved in that kind of organizations. We have to, the first, we, can, we, we have to start complaining. 
probably there, there is something good in, in our organization, the payment, the vacation, or just being lazy, but scratching and nobody saying nothing. Okay, second option, leave the job. Probably the reason why there, there are still a lot of companies like that is because the people don't leave the job. And the third, probably the hardest, but the funniest, is to try to become a uh, change agent and try to change that organization, trying to break barriers and make it different, you know? If we choose to, make, to take this way, to become a change agent, uh, one thing, management is too important to leave only in the hands of managers. So it's everyone's job. We have to, if we want to, to change the organization, we have to take care of that. It doesn't matter if we are not the boss of anyone, okay? That's a quote of Jorgen Apollo. We have to take this, make this happen, okay? Well, if we decide to take this way, the way of becoming a change agent, we have three challenges ahead, and we will see some advices to how to get that work. First of all, we have to, uh, we have to understand that right now we are, we are in a moment in the history of humanity that change is exponential. Well, things are changing very, very fast. Uh, there, there is a history of, about how the, the, the chess is created. It said that the, the inventor chose the, the, the game to a king, and the king was very grateful with that. He said, what do you want in, in exchange for that? And the, the inventor said, OK, give me one grain of rice for the first uh, box of the, the, the chessboard. Double that, double that, and double that. OK, so uh, the, the king said, OK, you are a humble man. Make it so. So the, 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 the mathematicians started making the accounting. And they realized that the numbers what was this. In the second row, we got one kilogram of rice, and double, and double, and double. When we get at the half of the chessboard, the second half, when we pass to the second half of the chessboard, uh, the thing is starting, is starting to get interesting because of the, 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 that growing rate, OK? We have 130 tons of of rice. At the end of the, the chessboard, we get this number. I don't really know how to read it. It's like trillions, 50,000 trillions of rice, maybe? OK, but the, the annual world production of rice right now is 700 millions of tons. So we have to get the 22,000 years of rice production to pay that good man. These numbers give us an idea of what that means, something going up and growing up uh, in an exponential way. But there is something related to technology that is growing in the same rate that is changing our lives. You know what it is? The Moore's law. In the year 1069, 65, uh, Gordon Moore is uh, he's the, the one of the founders of Intel, said that the, the amount of transistor will double each year, that, uh, that we can put in the same area, will double each year. So, uh, and after, in 2007, he modified to 18 months. The thing is, this is happening right now and, and still happening, okay? And this makes that a lot of technology things happens in our life. For instance, we say that the thing is starting to, to become interesting in the half of the, the chessboard, OK? And the, the half of the technological, technological chessboard, it was in the year 2006. And what happened since that? The iPhone, the iPad, MacBook Pro get invented, the PlayStation, YouTube, Twitter, Uber, and that, and that, and that. A lot of technologies that radically changed our life, 
Okay? Look at the evolution of our desk in the last years. Everything that used to be analogic just become uh, an application, an icon inside our computer or even in our mobile phone. Everything is getting digitalized, okay? We have to understand that. The future is about digitalization. You know, that's happened in a couple of years. Wow. Incredible, right? So we have to take advantage of that. One of the things that I saw usually when I, I'm trying to convert and to make digital transformation of the, the, the companies is that they don't take the, com the, the technology in, in their favor, you know, and they take advantage of the technology. Usually, the traditional way to create products is we get an idea, we pass it to the business people, they care about features, client needs, business value, return of investment. Once they, ha they have a concrete idea, they pass it to the IT guys, the technology guys, they make the development, taking care of technology, performances, good practices, maintainability. They get the product. Right now, it's problem of the QA people. They check the requirements, quality, normatives, uh, mistake-free, that. And once they have checked it, now it's problem of the operations guys. They take care about stability, scalability, security, and recovery for, from failure. And after that, we can deliver our product or service. Right now, with this era where everything is really, really fast, we have to change. We have to use the technology to, in, in, to try to use the benefits of Agile, the benefits of DevOps, and we have to, create, we have to try to create a highway where this process is faster than ever with minimum friction, you know? taking care of, taking advantage of the technology. Another thing, another challenge we have here. We are in a era of disrupting, disruptive innovation, okay? That's what people think about the cloud. No, it's not like that. It's another kind of disruption. If you move your product to digitalization, you probably will pass through these six stages. First, you decide to move your product or service to digitalization. The first moment is deceptive because uh, explain it in, in functions, linear functions at, at the beginning grow faster than exponential because of the multiplication for, by zero and that. Uh, imagine when the, um, you know, the MP3 or the digital pictures, the digital cameras are starting to work, any, no, no, no they're, they're, they weren't professional photographers taking pictures without cameras because the, the quality was not so good. But in a moment, they become disruptive. So in the, 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 the function, exponential, go faster than, than linear, and they get better results. So using this more law and in the technology, we get the demonetized the, the technology. Every, every time it gets cheaper and cheaper. For instance, the, the first computer, the ENIAX, it cost more than $5,100 and only has 500 flops, uh, floating operating point operations. And the iPhone 6 in, in the 14, it got more than 7,000 mega flops for 600 dollars, you know? The money is moving out of the table. The five step is things starting to get the materialized. What we digitalize moves to some application, how, how we see on the, on the animation of the, our desk, desktop, right? And finally, it gets democratized. Everybody gets access to that technology, okay? We have to empower that. We have to trying to our companies to create that kind of solution, disruptive solution, okay? A quote that I like a lot is, for uberization, for every industry, product, or service, there is 
its own Uber awaiting. Okay? We are facing an innovation revolution. This quote is from Mike Biddle, one of the sing singers of the Agile Manifesto. He died the, the last year. And the third, and the most important thing, because technology represents the how we have to handle that, but the people represent the why. So we have to mind the people. But not like that. Not, not like that. Uh, a, a nice quote that I like from Richard Branson is, clients do not come first, employees come first. If you take care of your employees, they will take care of your clients. Okay? And right now, we are uh, having a new target of people. It's called Generation C. There is a lot of millennials inside this generation, but it's, it's not a generation about uh, the year you birth. It's about the about uh, behavior, you know? And the behavior is uh, written with C letter. That's why it's called Generation C. It's, th that, that behavior is one of the most strong, and uh, it, 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 we are hyper-connected people. Eh? We have channels to present what we know, what we have to offer, the same channel that the celebrities. We work collaboratively, we are very critics, prone to change, and consumerist. We have to take care, we, we have to seduce this target of people, not only as clients, also like co-workers, okay? We talk about how to seduce our clients a little bit before, but we don't talk about how to seduce our collaborators, okay? This is a theory from Gary Hamel that I like a lot. He said that the, in the East industrial economy, we need the, the people to be obedience, diligence, and has physical skills, you know, in the factory. We need like that. And the, and, and in the knowledge economy where publicity, lawyers, engineers become more popular, we need intellect and experience also. And right now, in the creative economy, that is one of the names that our era receives, we need three more things to get the, the difference. Initiative, creativity, and passion. And there's a line that divides the three on top from the four on the bottom. The four of the bottom are commodities, that things that you can buy, you can command. But the things on the top are given voluntarily. So you have, we have to create an environment where people give us these three things. That's key for getting success in this transformational moment in history we are living. That's a, a quote I like a lot. The problem with complaining about the, about the system is that the system can hear you, only people can. And the problem is that the people in the system are too often so yet to believe that they have no power over the system, that they are merely victim, victims of its pawns, cogs in a machine bigger than themselves. Alas, when the system can hear you and those who can believe they have no power, nothing improves. System don't mistreat us, misrepresent us, waste our resources govern poorly, support an unfair status quo, and generally screw things up. People do. Only if we care enough, we can make it change. It's from Seth Godin. So, in summary, and we are finishing the, the talk. We have a new context, and we have to realize how we can work in a different way. And in this challenge, the, the four bigger p pillars is we have to engage with our customers. We have to empower our, our employees. We have to optimize our operations, the way we work inside our company. We have to transform our products and services. And all of these amplify each other. At, at the end of the day, it's just a simple formula that has to be balanced. We have to take care of people, and we have to take care of technology. 
So let's react before it's too late. Thank you very much.